Good day, mates. This is Elizabeth Chariskis reporting from the beautiful Shark Bay World Heritage Area in Western Australia. Today, we are going to visit Hamlin Pool, which is home to cyanobacteria stromatolites. These tiny little bacteria have been on Earth for at least 3.5 billion years, and I will explain why they are the epicenter of the biological and atmospheric evolution that has taken place on our wonderful planet Earth. Yes, our very existence is owed to these industrious little guys. Here we are at Hamlin Pool. Let's go down and have a look. These cyanobacteria stromatolites have built up layer upon layer of calcium carbonate between sheets of bacteria. The tides wash in and out with extra salty seawater, and the temperatures in Hamlin Bay get up to 113 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer months. Cyanobacteria survive because other organisms like algae have trouble competing with them under these conditions. Let's take a look at the biochemical processes these cyanobacteria invented. This is a balanced equation of photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide plus water uses sunlight energy to make glucose and oxygen. Finally, a living thing has created oxygen. It is thought that the Earth, our solar system, and our sun formed about 4.6 billion years ago from repeated collisions of material in a giant cloud of dust that mainly contained hydrogen and helium gas. This young planet Earth was a soup of molten lava bombarded by asteroids, meteors, and comets. By 4.1 billion years ago, constant volcanic eruptions resulted in an extremely poisonous atmosphere of acids, methane, ammonia, and other greenhouse gases, which kept the Earth toasty warm. The carbon dioxide level was around 30%. This environment was not welcoming for living organisms. Then, about 3.5 billion years ago, some industrious little cyanobacteria evolved a method of photosynthesis that produced oxygen as a byproduct. Several very interesting things resulted. Carbon dioxide was consumed in the photosynthesis process, which lessened the greenhouse effect on Earth, so it began to cool down. The oxygen that was initially produced was bound by iron in the oceans by oxygenation, also called rusting. And finally, after a billion years of oxygen production, the iron in the oceans was saturated enough so oxygen could start to accumulate in the atmosphere. This was a huge game changer, and evolution really took off. As you can see by this timeline, about one billion years ago, Earth's atmosphere was beginning to consist of components similar to our modern-day atmosphere. This is why our planet was able to support the evolution of life with such tremendous biodiversity. A little over a half a billion years ago, the Cambrian explosion resulted in most of the animal phyla we have today, and the first land plants and animals became established about 0.4 billion years ago. The supercontinent Gondwana formed at this time, and the Australian continent I am standing on today was part of this landmass. Pangaea, which included North America, was a latecomer about 0.2 billion years ago. Here, at the very end of the timeline, roughly 100,000 years ago, no more than a blink in time, humans evolved. Notice that today's atmosphere is roughly 21% oxygen and carbon dioxide makes up less than 1%, quite a change from the 30% carbon dioxide and undetectable oxygen which existed before cyanobacteria got to work with photosynthesis 3.5 billion years ago. It boggles the mind to think how life on Earth would have been different if cyanobacteria had not produced oxygen and started the cascade of events shown on this timeline. This is why I believe they should be given credit as the epicenter of the biochemical and evolutionary processes that have taken place on our planet Earth. I hope you have enjoyed learning about cyanobacteria stromatolites and sharing in the beauty of Shark Bay World Heritage Site. A great big thanks goes out to the Western Australia Department of Environment and Conservation for taking such good care of this exceptional place.